everybody. Today we have the story of Ruth. So we had Judges and um, there is a little bit at the end of the book of Judges that we didn't cover but it's not necessary for our purposes for Sunday school lessons so we're going to move on to Ruth. Um, and Ruth is many people's favorite story so hopefully you enjoy it. Now the book of Ruth actually starts with a man named Elimelech and his wife, Naomi, and their two sons, Malon and Chilion. And they were from Bethlehem, but they moved to Moab, which was a little ways away outside of the promised land of Israel, um, east of that. And the reason that they went over there was um, that there was a famine in the land where they lived. And so they went there because they heard that there was better crops over there. Well, they stayed there for 10 years. And at first things seemed good. There was food and um, life seemed easier there. The two sons grew up and they took wives named Ruth and Orpah, but then Elimelech died. And if that wasn't bad enough, then Malon and Chilion died. So it was just Naomi left with two daughters-in-law who were not Israelites, Ruth and Orpah. Naomi was so sad that when she heard that there was rain and food again in Israel, she decided that she should go back. There was nothing left for her in this new land. She was going to go back. So she packed her things and Ruth and Orpah decided they were going to go with her. And they probably went with her a little ways. And then Naomi said to the two girls, you should go back to your families. You're still young. You can marry someone else. Go back to your homes, your families. And at first they both cried and said, no, we won't leave you. But eventually Orpah said, okay, she was going to go home. And, and Naomi kissed her and she went home. And then Ruth kept following Naomi and Naomi said, you need to be like Orpah and go home. And Ruth said, no, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die too. And so Naomi allowed Ruth to continue on with her. And they came back to Israel and she went back to their old hometown where they used to live. And when the villagers saw her coming, they knew who she was. And they said, Naomi. And she said, no, don't call me Naomi. I am so sad. I am bitter. Call me Mara. Now you might remember the Israelites when they were going through the wilderness, they came to some water that was really bitter that they couldn't drink and they called it Mara. So it was the same idea, bitterness. She was so sad and bitter over the death of her husband and two sons. She said, I went out full and I came back empty, call me Mara. And so Naomi, um, who wanted to be called Mara, um, and Ruth settled back into their new life. And it would have been a very poor life because there was no men in the home to go out and make money for food and everything they needed. Um, so Ruth had to be pretty creative. She heard about the customs of the Israelites, the actual the law that God had instituted where um, the poor were to be taken care of. And the way that that worked was that when someone had a field that they were harvesting and things fell on the ground, they weren't supposed to pick them up again. They were supposed to leave them there. And then the poor people could come along behind the reapers and they could pick up the stuff that had fallen down and take that home to eat. So they weren't, um, they weren't being lazy. They were going out and working just like the people that owned the food that owned the field and they were still getting food to eat. So it was a nice way of the poor people being fed. So that is what Ruth decided to do. She went out and she just happened to come along a field where there was reapers and she fell in behind them with a bunch of other women. And as the, the barley fell on the ground, she would reach down and pick it up. 
and she worked there all day long. And then the man that owned the field came along and saw her. His name was Boaz. Now what Ruth did not know was that Boaz was related to Elimelech. And that's really important because to God and to the Jews, the family lines were really important and the inheritance that went along with those family lines, the, the land that the family inherited was very important. You'll hear about that again more with um, um, Jezebel and a certain vineyard. But anyways, that's beside the point. But it's good to understand these things. So Boaz saw Ruth and he asked the men that worked for him, Who, who's that girl? I haven't seen her before. And they said, oh, that's Naomi's daughter-in-law, Ruth. And Boaz already knew all about her because it was a small town and tongues wag. Anyone that lives in a small town, PEI, definitely knows about the wagging tongues and the grapevine and all the rest of it. So Boaz already knew all about Ruth. And so he came over to talk to her and he said, listen, I would like you to stay in my field. And um, if you get thirsty, you can go over to where my workers are. They have some water and you can go and have something to drink. You're welcome to come the whole harvest. You can come and be safe in my field. I have talked to the young men and no one will touch you the way unnecessarily. No one will hurt you. You will be safe and protected here. You come join us. Every day you just follow behind my reapers and we'll make sure that you and Naomi are taken care of. So Ruth was very thankful about that. The workers had told Boaz that Ruth was a very good worker. She worked hard all day without long breaks or anything like that. And so Boaz actually told them to purposely drop extra for her. And so they did. And by the time she left that day, she had a good amount of barley to take home and show Naomi. So when she came in the door with her big pile of barley, Naomi said, where were you? How did you get that much? And Ruth told her, oh, it was a field over there. It was owned by a man who said his name was Boaz. And Ruth said, oh, that's wonderful. He is um, a relative of Elimelech. You make sure that you always go to his field. Don't let them catch you in somebody else's field for the whole harvest. You go to his field and he'll take care of you. So that was all fine. And she went all through the barley harvest and all through the wheat harvest. And um, Ruth and Naomi were fed that way. And then Naomi gave Ruth um, some very special instructions. She was concerned about the future, for her own future, for Ruth's future, for Boaz's future. And um, she wanted to make sure that everything worked out well. Now, the way that land was passed down, it was passed down through families. Elimelech could not pass down the land that he had inherited to Malon and Chilion because they were dead. And Naomi and Ruth couldn't really do anything with it because they were women. And that's just the way it worked back then. So whoever was the closest male relative could buy back or inherit the land. Different things say different, uh, it says different things in different places. Um, the Bible, I believe, actually makes it sound as though they're selling the land. I didn't do enough research on that, obviously. Um, so she gave Ruth some special instructions. She said, Boaz is, he can be a kinsman redeemer. He is the one of the closest male relatives. So this is what I want you to do, Ruth. I want you to put on your prettiest clothes and I want you to put on some perfume, take a a bath and then I want you to go down in the night where Boaz and his men are winnowing all the grain and getting it ready to store and in the evening I want you to watch them where they're going to eat and then they're going to sleep there in the field to, to guard all that food. You watch where he lies down and when he lies down and everybody sleep you go over to him 
and you uncover his feet and then you lie down at his feet and he'll wake up. Nobody likes their feet uncovered. Well, most people don't like their feet uncovered. They'll wake up. So he'll tell you what to do. You just do that. So Ruth did everything that Naomi told her to do. And she went and she watched Boaz. She saw where he went to sleep. And then after dark, when everyone was asleep, she tiptoed over and she uncovered his feet and she laid down on the ground. And he woke up, like at midnight, he woke up. He was like, there's somebody there. What are they doing? And he said, who's there? And Ruth sat up and she said, it's me, it's Ruth. Um, and, and she had spread his garment over her feet or over her a little bit. And, and she said, will you be, will you be the part of the kinsman redeemer for me and Naomi? In other words, it was like, would, she was asking him, would you be willing to marry me and then have children with me and then the land of Elimelech would be the inheritance of their children and then therefore Elimelech's inheritance would still get passed down through them because remember Boaz was related to Elimelech so some of the DNA is the same there it's kind of still going through the family line and so Boaz said bless you for not chasing after young men, rich or poor. So obviously Boaz was a fair bit older than Ruth. He was so impressed that she would be willing to marry him instead of some handsome young guy somewhere. He said, I will, but there is someone who's a closer relative than me. So I'll check with him as soon as possible and and if he wants to redeem the land, then he'll have to be able to do that. But if he doesn't want it, then I totally will. So just, just wait. So he told her to lay down till morning. It probably wasn't safe for her to go home in the middle of the night. The next morning, early in the morning, no one saw. He, he filled her um, apron with food, with the grain that they were preparing, and sent her home to Naomi. As soon as she came in the door, Naomi said, who are you? She said, how'd it go? And Ruth told her everything and Naomi said, don't you worry, he will take care of things by tomorrow. He will not let it rest. You just wait and see. So they just waited and that day Boaz went to the gate of the city. Now back then that was where all the judgments were, where the wise men and the rulers of the city would sit at the gates of the city. And people could come and discuss important matters and make decisions. So Boaz decided he was going to go sit there and hang out and look for this other nearer relative. So he was sitting there among the men there and then he saw him and he was like, oh ho, hey, come on over here. Come on over here. I was just, just thinking about you. You sit right down on here with me. Oh yeah, yeah. This is great. This is great. You're just who I was looking for. You know, you remember Elimelech and Naomi and Naomi came back again. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Naomi's wondering about that land of Elimelech. Would you like to buy that land? And um, the other man was like, oh yeah, I would like to buy that land. Boaz, and Boaz said, okay, that's great. Um, just one thing, if you buy the land, then you have to marry Ruth because she's the, the daughter-in-law of Elimelech. And the other man was like, oh, right. If I buy that land, that will ruin my own inheritance. So the land that he had would get all confused and, and mixed up with this land and the inheritance. And, and he was like, no, no, that's, that's not a good idea. I can't do that. And so Boaz said, okay, then I will buy the land. And back then they didn't shake hands to seal the deal. They didn't even spit on their hand and shake hands and seal the deal. They didn't pat each other on the back. They didn't do like a high five. They didn't sign their name on a deed. They took off their shoe. So took off a shoe and gave it to the other man. And he said to the 10 elders that were sitting with them, that were watching this whole thing and listening, he said, okay, 
This is to show today I have decided that I will buy the land of Elimelech and marry Ruth and um, keep that inheritance going in the family of Elimelech. So that's what happened. Boaz, he married Ruth and God blessed them with a child, a son named Obed. And Naomi was so happy. I'm sure she never wanted anyone to call her Mara again after that. The other ladies in town were so impressed with Ruth that they said that she was worth like seven sons or ten sons. I think it was seven. That she was worth seven sons. That she was so good to Naomi. And so... Um, Naomi loved to take care of little Obed and he made her heart so happy and um, through this little child something amazing happened. You'll remember this all happened in the town of Bethlehem. Hmm, what else happened in Bethlehem? Oh right, that was the birthplace of Jesus and sure enough Ruth was the great 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 grandmother of Jesus. Her little son named Obed was the father of Jesse, who was the father of King David. And it was through King David's line that Jesus was born. Remember, the everlasting, the everlasting kingdom. There would be a, a king forever on the throne of David. And the cross of Jesus, you can see here, is the way that we can go to heaven and be with Jesus someday, the everlasting king. Just like Ruth chose to make the true God that created the world her God and left behind the gods of the Moabite people to worship the true God and become an Israelite, we can trust in Jesus and his death for us and go to heaven and be with him someday. So that is a really nice story that hopefully um, you enjoyed and you'll remember and we'll see you next time. Thanks.